Welcome to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. Gene Harden. Gene Harden is back in the motherfucking building. Gene Harden, welcome back, baby. What's going on? We were trying to figure out the last time I was here. So it's only been three years? Three years. Yeah. Three years. I mean, you know, YouTube says three. It could be three plus. It's not going to say, you know, as far as like half or quarter. Yeah. But yeah, it's been. So it's about time. Pretty much, that's what I'm saying. Fuck well, yeah. To yes, this it welcome, is. It's about time. Yeah, yes, yes, it is, man. Shit, back. Three years. What What? what can we flash back with in three years? This is post. Post COVID. Post COVID, somewhere around 21, right? So. Shit. A lot has happened since. Shit. A lot has a lot happened lot since. What's going on in my world? Yeah, yeah, likewise over here, man. Yeah. I mean, I think. Worldwide, man. Who hasn't really been through something? I mean, when it, it, everybody who went through COVID, I guess unless you were wealthy and it never really, you know, shook you, everybody got shook in some well, shape or fashion. No, no, no. Even if you was wealthy. You I, yeah, I, I would assume. I don't know. <laughs> COVID, for the first time, COVID leveled the playing field for a lot of people and a lot of businesses. That's actually very true. I was not even thinking like that. That's accurate as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, we... All business was, owners got hit the everybody hardest, right? Everybody got leveled it's true. to ground zero when COVID happened. You can't go out, you right. can't promote, you can't interact. So social media saved a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy about COVID? You know when, when um you know how people unite during tough times, right? Um hurricanes, natural disasters, uh crazy shit like 9 11, uh things of that, you know, bombings, terrorist attacks, whatever. People unite, you can, you get more prideful, more American, more, you know, whatever it is. I don't see color, I don't see race. That didn't happen during COVID. That didn't happen during COVID. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of separation during COVID. A lot. Because oh. it was like, how dare you not wear a mask? So, oh, you mean, and, so and, that kind of separation? Yeah. There, there, the people there, that- there wasn't no uniting. Like, there was nothing to unite about. Everybody was still puzzled as to, like, what the fuck just happened? What's happening? Is it gonna happen again? Ooh. Is it real? Is it not? Is like what the, you know? There was a whole and then there's divide going on and yeah. I, but when in the history of life was there not that divide? Like if this oh, if people got something to argue about on every turn. <laughs> yeah. So you gonna true, there's bro, nothing that happened in this world yeah. that you gonna have a unanimous. Yeah, but I'm but I'm saying again the reference is people will you come together during tough times in order to you know become stronger and maybe because they're more sympathetic of each other because we're all going through 9/11. it 11 right exactly and i i know i felt it firsthand during hurricane andrew here in south florida um august 24th you'll never forget it if you've been through in 1992 and we, we saw you people uniting that i've never seen right there in the hood i grew up right there in the hood and and blacks latinos got together in a way that I've never seen and then whites got involved and all the, the voluntary food that was being given and people helping other, other people's houses rebuild or covering them up. Like, never seen that before, you know, my whole upbringing. And, and things like that, you know, it's touching. It reminds you, you know, about the good that we have in us, that the, the possibility that we have in us. Yeah, so wait, you saying that you didn't see that at all during COVID? No, nah, no. Nah. Well, and, 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 and I'm not trying to argue it, but but I would like for you to tell me if, if you think differently, where did well, you first, see it? First of all, COVID was the most was the 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 disease in it, I mean the um the virus in itself was a separator. Like you was it forced you physically yeah. to be apart and to separate and to divide. Six feet. Mass, yep. no contact, yep. wash. Yep. Yep. So yep. it was already training our brains. I don't give a fuck who you are. Like, yo, stay away from me. Right. But then, I guess from your point of view, you saying, add to that racism mm. or, 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 or sexism or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? That starts getting thrown into the mix when you see somebody, you at the store. Like, like just think about all the you viral. See somebody, like, they, they see you with a mask, but they, they black. But they right. act more funny because they why I, I get that part, but like it, COVID in itself was already a separated. It just separated human beings from contact and made us whack. Yeah, <laughs> it really did. It whack you know, towards each other. The, the, I remember the best part about COVID was when, um, in the very very beginning when it first happened and we were all shut down, like almost no one was going anywhere except grocery stores, pretty much. I don't, and then first responders. I remember I took a drive to the beach. 
and I took the 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 scenic route. I took Old Cutler, which is a beautiful back route, one laner that wraps around the closest you can to the shorelines of Miami as it gets into Key Biscayne and so on and so forth. And anyhow, people from Miami know that that drive. It's a beautiful drive. And I I, I took that <clears throat> I took that drive and there's certain parts where you see your joggers and your bike riders because it's very canopied by a bunch of beautiful trees that have been growing for you know multiple years. Man, I've never seen so many motherfucking people outside walking their dogs, jogging with their families, pushing cars. During I, COVID? I, I, yeah, right after. I'm talking about in the heat of oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. So you, you you never seen that many more people? Out. They, they, like they were stuck at home. Oh, right, yeah. And they knew that they needed to get, they needed to get out. I've never seen that many. You would have thought there was some type of like marathon or event going on oh, on like both sides. Yeah, on both sides. Both sides of walkers, joggers, bikers, pushers, skaters, you name it. That was a good thing. And all I thought was, you motherfuckers should be doing this weekly. On a regular. Yeah. 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 Well, you you had to be forced in the house with this scare and all this, you know, riffraff going on to bring that out of you, you know? So that's yeah. the only thing that I saw. Fast forward now, watching spring break, break down these cities. These kids is out here wilding. You just wilding seen that? Yeah, yeah. You, shit, you stay over there in Broward. We're, we're, uh-huh. we're, we were briefly talking about it. That, you know, Miami, man... It, this is a touchy subject. This is, I'm glad you brought that up. This is a touchy subject. Because as, as Miamians, especially those of us who like to go to the beach or like to go to the boardwalk in, in Broward, go to Las Olas, go to South Beach, go, you know, things of that nature, these spring breakers fucked it up for, for our city in so many different ways. And people want to act like, oh, those, are, those people in Miami, those people in Florida, they're wilding out. They're this and that. That's not us doing it. Not granted. It ain't just us. And, and I know that they're, they're involved in there. And I, okay, I know. But it's them. It's, it's spring breakers. Of course, they're going to wild out. They don't give a fuck. They're leaving in a couple of days. I'm, listen, it's easy to, like, put a whole blanket on spring breakers, right? Uh-huh. But it, there's just a lot of whack people that be coming down to Florida and, like, just. They want to cut up when they're just, here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the place for it. You've you been to Vegas saying? before? Yeah. Okay. I remember when I went to Vegas for the first time. One of the wildest things that I vividly remember was, and there's not many times you can say this unless you you go to concerts, okay? Maybe fights, uh, sporting events. When you feel this amount of energy, you know, when you go to those events, if you go to a fight event, you feel that 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 energy level is different because right. people want to see violence. People are already kind of nervous. They're anxious. They're this. They're that. And this is just woo. Fucking feels great, bro. You go to football, it's a little bit different, you know? Mm-hmm. You're kind of more cocky or you're like, man, we're going to stop a mud hole in this fucking team and so on and so forth. When you get to Vegas, at least for my first time, you sense it the minute you're in that atmosphere, dog. When that, when that plane touches down, you sense sex, drugs, <laughs> fucking gambling. <laughs> you just sense, I'm going to wild the fuck out while I'm here. And everybody I'm gonna encourage that shit. And, and of course, and, and we've all been fed the commercials, obviously. You know what, I, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas, and you see these wild-ass commercials of these chicks wilding out or shit like, um, what's it called, the movie, um, the, com- the comic movie uh, with, with Zach Hangover. Or, Hangover. Hangover. You know, shit like that. It, it, it's, it's already embedded in your brain in some shape or form. So, of course, placebo effect, the, you're going to get there thinking it, envisioning it, and then feeling it. I get that. But do you still feel that? Now going back to Vegas, yeah, every, every time? yeah, almost, man. And I used to go a lot. I used That's to. That's why a lot. I don't go. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Right. Stop going, cause like, energy's a real thing. If yeah. you take if you take your black ass to somewhere in fucking middle of Wisconsin where it's just townspeople chilling, even though I hope it goes good for you, <laughs> I'm comfortable. Later. The energy is different over there. They're all so laid back. You're gonna feel those energy waves. You're not gonna go there and feel all kind of. Or well, unless you go to a Green Bay Packer game. Unless you bring that energy. Ooh, that's true. Of course. I carry that light everywhere. Do you really believe in that, though? Do you really believe in the, the energy waves that can be sensed? It can be thrown at somebody, and it can be sensed by people. 100%. You do. And, okay. And, you know, I say it like that because I really wasn't that dude before. Like, I, it used okay. to be, like, fluff to me listening to people talk about energy and Fluff, I like that terminology. You know what I'm okay, that, that's what it used to seem like to me. Okay, like meditation and all that. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I ain't bought that life. Let me give me my meat. 
Let me eat, you know, I was a carnivore, you know what I'm saying? So, like, like eat, give me my food, let me, let me drink my beers and do whatever. But, like, I didn't, I, I thought all that stuff was fake until I had to go through situations, you know what I'm saying? And then I was like, oh, wow, this is real out here. Like, it's, like, energy is real. Like, you could feel it. You could pass it. And if you don't harness it good, it's just going to be, I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I'm with I, you on I, that. I'll go off on a tangent on that shit, but like, and it's and it's not like we know it, know it. We don't know a definitive answer, but science, science, scientific theories, research, studies. There's a whole lot of shit out there that definitely proves in favor of, uh, you know, energy waves that are sensed and mm-hmm. given off by all kinds of different things. Have you ever, no, if you want to talk some nerdy shit, you ever seen shit on plants, and the type of sound waves and how it affects them and all kind of shit not exactly but whatever you tell me i'm about to believe it bro they so okay so they have this healthy plant and, I, and i'm gonna fucking totally murder this so please nobody you know hold this against me yeah. i saw uh, uh kind of like a little docuseries okay so these plants you put in this room and, and they actually are in a, a, a room that was made for them which they soundproofed it and everything right so they put them in there and they're trying they, they put all kind of uh, sensory, you know, things that will monitor the soil, mm-hmm. the leaves. They, they got high definition cameras, 4K on them in case they 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 wither a little bit. This, or, for, this for regular plants or weed? No, plants, regular oh. plants, regular oh. plants. But they do think it's very, you know, uh, universal. Meaning, plants have lives. They sense, oh. they hear, they react, they have emotions. They do all that. So they put all these little, you know, sensory things like if you're on some EKG machine type yeah. shit, and they're, they're recording all the, you know, what they could, whatever the fuck it is that they're recording, you know, a heartbeat, I don't know, whatever. Dude, then they will play music. And they'll play different types of music to see how it responds. And it responded differently to all different music. Then they they they, they put up somebody in there <clears throat> and they said, say nothing but nice things to I did the see plant. That. All right. And say it, but you say it and mean it so that it gets your energy. It's not just hearing words because now you're assuming that this plant understands the English fucking language. No, it's more about the energy. It, ultimately, that's what they were talking about. It wasn't about the words. Right. It was that if I say it, I'm meaning it. I'm, if I'm saying it, I'm really feeling it. So tell it how much, how beautiful it is, how much you love it, how this, you want to water it, da 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 Recorded it, boom. Then what came back later on, then they cussed the fucking thing out. <laughs> I swear to God, dog. Cussed it out, said all kind of evil shit. This thing reacted differently to every little thing that was done. Over time, or this was like a, a instant reaction? No, most of it was like semi, not instant, instant, but but like, yeah, like very reactive. Not not like... But like over how much time? I don't know. I, I, again, I don't want to mess it up, right, but some, right, right. Somewhere, with, some, up. somewhere between 30 seconds to two minutes at most. Oh, oh. So, right. Somewhere there, they started seeing some oh, type of. It, it wasn't the next day or right, something right, like right. that. No, 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 no. And they had people behind the fucking cameras watching it the whole time. Oh, it, okay. it was, it was crazy interesting, bro. And and yeah, man, you know that's one of those things that definitely helps me believe that energy waves and all that shit is real and everything oh, can sense oh, but it. Also, what you say. Yeah, exactly. What you say, you put in a it, lot yeah. of weight. Yeah, you know, and like people underestimate that. I, w- I was guilty of that too, bro. We all are. I was, we I was all are. you know, I literally just started changing that like a month ago. Mm-hmm. Like, I need to stop. I saw even clowning, you shouldn't say anything negative about yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, and let's say you just said something like, yeah, man, I'm I'm stubborn as fuck. Yo, you know, sometimes I'm just really hard headed like that. I, I need to bump my head against the wall a couple of times before you know I realize you know something better for me. No, don't say that. Don't talk like that. Because even though you think it's nothing, it's a joke. Like you taking that deep breath, but really, there's a lot of there's a lot of theory that supports that that shit will affect you in all the wrong ways. Cool, but this is what I think. I think it's okay. <laughs> well, for me. Let me tell you what works for me. Like, if that's what it is, I'll say it to myself. Okay. Like, I'll have one of those one-on-one conversations in the mirror, and we'll just talk. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Nobody's listening, or everybody's listening, however you want to look at it. You know, if God's listening to the universe, whatever you believe in or don't believe in. But I've had conversations with myself that has just been so, I kept it so, 
so a buck with myself, you know what I mean? Talking about everything. So that's not me necessarily um, conforming to, like say I'm talking to myself in the mirror, like having a heart to heart, and I say I'm stubborn. That's not um, like an admittance of like defeat. It, it It's just an acknowledgement. All right, that's something I want to work on. It is what it is. It's the truth of it, if that's what, you know, whatever it is you say about yourself. But that's something I want to work on. So You know what I mean? So, you're, you're, so it's great that you said that all on your own, and, and I didn't want to interrupt. You're, you're 100% correct. The two or three gurus, psychologists, whatever, that were talking about this topic, about saying it and what it does, they actually said that that's the way to do it, the right way. Oh. So if you were going to say that the way you did, but you're saying it in order to, you're, you're following it with the suggestion of, okay. The solution. Yes. I need to work on this because what just occurred was hard-headed. There, there, there I was being hard-headed again, and that's not good. That gave me bad results. And because of that, I need to acknowledge that, and I need to work on it. What was it I did wrong? Okay, at that point, it's good because you're going in. I don't want to say with the solution, but, yeah, you're mm -hmm. going in uh, strategically mm -hmm. versus just throwing it out there and that, having a, a, an effect on you psychology, uh, psychologically, uh, put it into the universe, right. or all that and, stuff. And I also don't say it in front of other people. Okay, that's, that's, I like that. I like that. Those that's conversations are my personal conversations. Right. Okay? Whether it's audible or not, even if I'm just, you know, having a meditation and just thinking in my, inside, I'm not talking down about myself to other people. Because they not, they don't know the work I'm doing right now they don't know the process i'm in so they just hear me say oh i'm stubborn they take it as what i said and they start formulating their opinion that's right of me off of what i said of me that's right brother so yep. i don't talk like that in front of people you yep. know what I mean? yeah 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 that, that, that's that's a damn good point man and um you know it's funny it makes me think when we were when we were kicking it that last time up until now look how soft the world has gotten uh, and you, 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 he go to, you, <laughs> you, here we go. Hold on, I want, I want to hear the noise that the lure makes as it, as it splashes through the water. What, what kind of lure are you working with? <laughs> That's, oh, you just waited. Come on, um, bring it in. Yeah, you know, it's one of those topics, obviously. We, yeah. we, 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 we know that. Gene, you're a comedian. Mm -hmm. This shit hits you guys a, a lot harder than it hits a lot of us because your world is just saying outlandish shit, not being able to get offended by shit, being able to deliver and to, to take it as well. Um, being able to, as free speech as you can imagine, that's what you guys live off of. And now the pussification of this goddamn world and this, and this generation of whatever you want to call them youngsters it's you know it, it has a certain role on you know you guys you guys can get banned easier you guys can get canceled easier you just, you, people are more touchy they're softer you know you can't you shouldn't say certain things like where where are you listen, at with that listen, as a all, comedian all all that shit did <clears throat> was expose capitalism at its best all this shit come down to is money that's all that is like be. People are afraid to say the same things they've been saying for whatever reason and for however long. They just don't say it no more or shouldn't say it no more because it's going to affect the bottom line of some bigger picture. Somebody who has a bigger agenda. Well, everybody got a bigger agenda. But, but the person got, who's whoever, paying whoever, the most. Whoever, whoever paying for it. Right. Whoever got the bread. Right. So if me saying whatever I say is going to affect the people that are buying this product, product then they're going to pull the plug. Oh, you can't say that no more. Wait, the same thing we've been saying for 100 years, however long, like, now shit is different because money is what's moving it all. So I ain't tripping about, like, uh, how different things are, how how much soft the people. See, people are soft because now everything is recorded. Everything can be seen. So, you know, people don't want to be documented for eternity as saying some shit some shit that they might have either thought that one time right. or said in the heat of the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, so now that's what that's what's really the thing. Like, nobody, because once it's down, 
Yeah, once it's recorded, that's it. Hey. You can't get away from it. And now you got you got a lot of explaining to you. That's why these politicians are having an even harder time than they ever did. Because now your shit is exposed. Whatever you said, your homie, you said that 20 years ago, but now you're doing this for this election. Sound mm -hmm. different. You sound different. So, so I don't really trip about that. Like, I mean, I say some things, man, on stage. <laughs> I be saying some shit. Right? You look back on it and you're like, damn. Nah, but I but I, I know my intention. Okay. Like my shit don't be like to offend people or make people mad. Nah, I'm lying. It be offensive. Right? But it ain't to make people mad. It's just to to make people look or see another perspective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. That's all it is. Like that's the only reason why we all here to to impart our perspective on things. Why does your opinion matter? Where does it matter? How much does it matter? You know? And so that's all it is. Like nobody's gonna be better. We never gonna have the right president. Cause there's always gonna be somebody. We there's always never gonna be gonna a, have the right situation for it, the world. It'll never be euphoric. It'll never be a, a a there'll never be a time where we're all gonna agree on the same thing. Wait, it's not gonna who, happen. Who even wants that time? Yeah, you know exactly. That makes us all the same. Who that, that's, even wants that time? Where's creation gonna come from if we ain't different? Right. right. You know and, 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 and obviously, pun intended, you're talking to a black sheep. You know. Yeah. So like, I, I agree with you. It, 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 we don't have to have all the same, you know, but we gotta respect. We gotta respect and, and, it. But then, then that word respect is used loosely. Like, what does right. that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, to, you're right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. somebody disrespects or d respect, right? I just think no matter the difference of somebody's opinion, how you put it out there makes the change, makes the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, meaning how you present the argument, how like, you present like, it, like, like you're like if you just coming from a good place. My, I'm like I just like now the power of no I use that shit a lot, right? Okay, I exercise it a lot. Okay, like if I'm if I'm with a shorty and she's saying something crazy or I, like I just like I don't cosign. I don't cosign. Right. I'm like nah, that ain't working for me. You know what I'm saying? But we don't we feel because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, so we don't say no. Or if they ask me an honest opinion or an honest question, and I say nah, that, I don't like that. That don't look good. I don't feel bad no more because that's just my opinion. I ain't saying it to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. That's just my truth. And once we get over that, we stop getting so personal about somebody else's no. We we'll we'll start accepting the difference. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So you so you think you think that society in a way, one of the things that affects us is that people have been like yes men. They they've been they they don't they refrain from being honest enough and straight up enough where it, it allows others to think more of what they are, what they're achieving, what their thoughts are, how, how, how egotistical they should be. Because you're taught, you're, you're, you're saying like, no, okay. When you say practicing the no factor, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. You're pretty much saying as in better cons when you know, you have your parameters to say no more often. Right. 100%. Okay. So if that's, the opposite of what most people do, which it is. Mm -hmm. I can't. I think it's kind of safe to say then that's probably why we have so many issues nowadays in society, along with an array of shit. But one of the things is because people aren't being straight up enough. They're not being honest enough. Instead of saying no, they're saying the yes, which is the same. To me, it's, it's comparable to you're, you're signing off on it, right? You say you're not signing off on something. Well, if you don't go against it, then you're signing off on it. That's no versus yes. Well, I think that I think that's equal to people are just going along with shit. Meaning you're fat, but I don't want to tell you fat. I'm going to tell you you're beautiful, girl. <laughs> that type of shit, you know. Yeah. That to me is saying yes and not no. You get you get what I'm saying. So, you get what I'm getting at with so that. You saying you saying that more chicks should be calling out their fat friends. A thousand percent. And I'm not making this about fat girls, but I'm just talking about friends on friends. Right, right, right. Friends on friends. You you should be straight up with them. But again, you said earlier, and I agree because I say this all the time, it's all about your delivery, though. If you don't deliver that, whatever it is you're trying to, to, to point out to a friend, to a lover, to a family member, whatever you're trying to suggest, you need to deliver that the right way. If not, it falls on deaf ears, deaf ears and you're not going to get anywhere. So if you deliver it correctly, yes, I think everybody should be way more blunt 
The whole cliche is fuck. But, honesty is the best policy. But, that is the truth. Multiply that. That's the truth. It's brutal honesty. Listen, it's brutal honesty is the best policy. I'm down for the honesty, right? But the catch is you saying it like she, because she's fat. No, no. Let me not put that. Let me not put those words in your mouth. Because I don't want to play that kind of devil's advocate. Okay. Well, I, ain't, I ain't going in that. Yeah, day. I'm already going to get hate from a few people. I don't need... You know. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't trying to swing that, that swing it that way. But um, I was just thinking, like, when I when I see it, like, all right, she fat. Like, she could still be fat right there. Like, she got every right to be around and down and chilling, you know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. But she fat. Right, like it's not a it's not a a point of me trying to be mean or you trying to be mean or people unless they are, and that's something different. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it is what it is until you make it something else, and I think that's the difference. Listen here, folks. Winter is amongst us. Spring's still a couple of months away. I know you guys are feeling this cool breeze. Why don't you go to BlackSheepApparel.shop and go cop you some of the dopest sweaters, hoodies, long sleeve shirts and everything else you can imagine to make you look fly for this season. Or maybe you're just getting ready for the summer or the spring. We got shorts, we got tank tops, we got it all. Make sure you go visit blacksheepapparel.shop to get the flyest gear and to remind the world that you're a proud black sheep. Now let's get back to the podcast. Something else that that been going on heavy, 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 heavy since the last time that we saw each other is uh the UFO phenomenon, man. Where where are you at with that shit? Nowhere. Nowhere? What do you mean? You don't give a fuck? Or you don't believe in it? Or you just don't care? None of those things. Let me just warn you. That this is a touchy for me, all right? That's fine. Let okay. me touchy. All right, go just, go, go, go ahead. It's going to be what it is. I don't I don't pay attention to it. Like if it doesn't fascinate you at all? Anything having to do with yeah, UFO? So that's the thing. It doesn't not fascinate me. You know what I mean? Like because I got other things I have to do, like, like if you present some information, like you're about to, I'm sure. No, right? not, no, not really. No. I mean, as you should, though. Okay. Because I, I really don't be knowing. I don't follow up on it. It ain't enough for me to, like, if I see it or hear about it on the news, cool, that's a story. But, like, it don't move me in no way. I get that. You know what I'm saying? Right, I, right. I don't know enough about it. I ain't seen enough about it. But I'm also not disinterested. So when people tell me, tell me some shit, or if I see it on the news, whether it looks fake or it don't, like I don't discount it. I just, like I said, I ain't, I ain't out there searching for that info. What's, what's something that does get Gene Hardy's attention? I mean, you're, 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 you're well rounded in a whole lot of shit, and that, that comes a lot with comedians. Mm -hmm. But what is something? What, what, what are some odd shits that that get your attention? Like you know, a, a random, the same, a stupid example: fishing or fucking scuba diving or parachuting or, or, or gun ranging or like. What what are some odd things that you like to do that not a lot of people don't know about? Like, yo, know, I like music. I like creating music. Yeah. I got a piano in my house. I got a, I got two guitars. I don't know how to play none of them. You trying to though? Yeah. 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 It's difficult. Nah. No. no nothing is difficult actually if you just focus. Yeah, you can pull it off, right? Of course, right, but. but that's so. But. But in trying all these things, what I'm really working on is the focus. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people be be getting caught up. Like, I'm one of them dudes who, like, I can't start a workout program unless I got every bit of equipment that I think I need for the joint. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I got to go get the the, the right uh, sneakers, the right uh, equipment, the right weights, all that stuff, right? Or sometimes I – or how many times, like, the algorithms on social media will see you look into something, men over 40 workout yeah. programs. Then you start right. getting bombarded with those same joints. Right. Now, I don't know about you, but like how many people out there, like me, subscribe to a few of them joints? You know what I'm saying? The meal plan, the workout joint, mass subscriptions. And it took it hit me one time like, oh, I'm not really paying for the better program, the better outfit, the better workout regimen i was trying to pay for the focus and i can't pay nobody for that because nobody else gonna provide it but me right so you think doing all that helped you help remind you to focus to well, stay focused it's, that, it's the only thing that i can do that no one else can do if i focus on what i have to do 
my job, my goal, whatever it is. Once I focus on it, then like nothing is hard. So if I put that focus into like learning that piano and learning music, yo, I'd be nice. Right, right. So I'm trying to, I'm working on that. I like, I like that. You know, um, when you challenge your mind to learn a new skill, from my understanding, your brain is now in, in like absorbing form. It's now very sensitive to information because you're training it to do something. It's it's there. It's kind of like if I'm training for a fight, my awareness is a lot sharper, right? I'm, I'm about to go into a fight. Or if I train MMA, my awareness is a lot sharper because I'm always training to dodge and slip and whatever. So my awareness is a lot sharper than the average person because it's something that I do. So when you do something like that that's challenging for you mentally and, and physically, it, it opens you up to absorb skills and, and, and do that. I, 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 that's how I take what you're saying, and I think that that's a good benefit from it, even if you haven't gone too far in, in any individual skill. At right. least you're, you're zoned in on that. On that note, something that you have been zoned in on, you have this new thing coming out right, that you've been doing that's called Hey Doc. Hey Doc. Hey Doc. Hey as in hey, and then Doc as in D-O-C, as in like you're talking to a doctor. Mm -hmm. This obviously, to me, has been new. And I love it. I love every bit of it. But there's a little bit more behind it than just, you know, some type of a seg uh, segment or skit. whatever skit, you know, that you want to call it. <coughs> Tell us a little bit about that. I want I want people watching because you've had some viral videos that have hit over a million, two million, three million. Mm -hmm. And and you're still fresh in this. But it's just awesome. How did it come about? And tell us a little bit about it. So I, a lot of people have ideas. I had a lot of ideas. Some of the joints I wrote down, and this was one of them. But then I started going through some real tragic things the past few years. So therapy was definitely, like, on the forefront. And then, but then comedy still was, like, you know, part of my my, my mission. So anyway, it, 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 I finally just got it together, and I focused, and I put this thing out called Hey Doc, where it's just me Finally, one, getting online, and two, kind of getting some of my ideas out there. Jokes that I wrote before, just ideas that I had, whatever. And so I just, you know, stopped being soft and finally just got over my eyes and started doing this shit. And, like, whatever, it just started taking off. A couple of videos kind of took off, and but I still got a lot more to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just now scraping the surface. It's, it's new to me. So it's it's you talking to to me to you but it's also hypothetically you talking to what a psycho a doctor a so psychologist that, a psychiatrist of some sort and you're telling them some type of issue you're yeah, dealing with i'm talking to some, my psychiatrist right and then you're answering how you think they would or you're answering in a way of you know you, you mix it up i answer it so sometimes the therapist would lead the conversation mm -hmm. if there's something I think he wants to get off his chest. So, you know, it depends on what the mood I'm in. Depends on what the point, I, the joke I'm trying to get off or whatever. They, it, some, I create them sometimes right there or sometimes I just write them down and I'll know beforehand what I'm going to talk about. Or sometimes I freestyle. And and the the viral ones, what 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 uh, how many did they millions did they hit? Yeah, one of the, the ones I. With the one that hit, so the first one that was, that went viral was like when the one about fat vegans. I don't know if you saw that one. <laughs> no, yeah. no. I went out with this girl who was fat, but she was a vegan. It was confusing to me, and so, so you got to watch that. I got, <laughs> you got to watch. That. I got a lot of shit for that. Though. Okay, that was the first one. Then the next one. And what what did that num what number did that hit? Uh, that was the first one that kind of went like two hundred twenty thousand. Ooh, okay. And then and this is only Instagram, mm -hmm. okay. I, I I put on everything. It's on TikTok, a couple on YouTube, but I guess because I ain't putting that focus in, mm -hmm. I'm not moving. Right, like but we're talking about exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm moving like that, but Instagram is, is pushing it, and uh, and then the next one, next two that went to like what three point one million, and uh, I forgot the other numbers, but anyway, just new shit, just like funny shit, just you know thoughts in my brain that like. I be thinking, all right, this might be funny. Some of them is crazy, outlandish, but like, all right, people might take to it. Take, taking a little turn to a little bit more of a serious note without having to go into any details. 
you said you actually had therapy. You said you actually went through some some uh, tragic issues, some difficult times in the last two or three years. Yeah. Without having to disclose too much, now that you went through the therapy, that you've had therapy sessions, however long it lasted, however deep they were, whatever that is, do you feel that it was one, I, I would assume it was beneficial, obviously, but more so, what was your takeaway from that? that like, do you think everybody should get therapy whenever they go through things? Did, or was that more of like, okay, if I was more sound, like my, you know, like mindly sound about approaching things because of what I went through, I wouldn't have needed a therapist. And I can see that that's where therapy is 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 helpful for people who don't approach things. And I kind of ask this in a weird biased way because I have a good friend of mine, Chris. We've talked about this. We 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 went through. We all went through some shit. My 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 family, my secondary family. We all went through some shit when we lost one of our brothers. You know what we call our captain, the captain of our team. You know, and that's Chris's actual brother, and that was somebody who was like a brother to the rest of us. And um, <clears throat> Chris never got therapy. A lot of us never got therapy. And when we talked about it, we talked about well, why? What? Well, well, how do you feel about that? Why didn't you get therapy? You know, you lost your brother. I lost a best friend who was like a brother. You were there. I was there. You were there. You saw this. You you know, why? 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 And we were kind of trying to figure that out. You know, was it our egos? Was it um, we didn't think we needed it because of some reason? Everybody had a different reason, whatever that might be. You know, we, we were trying to figure it out. We kind of talked about it. And we all talked about it differently. Like, I didn't speak that with everyone, but I spoke about it with Chris very openly. I really didn't speak that with my brother. Um, but I spoke about it with Chris and it was a weird thing how we kind of both felt the same and like, you know, we don't want to insult anybody, but, but, but what we kind of said was like, listen, if, if you can acknowledge what's wrong with you and you realize that and you understand, you know, the, what you, how you have to address it and so on and so forth. And I know you got something to say over it because I know there's plenty of things that can be said against what I'm saying. We just thought that you didn't have to have somebody else remind you of it and tell you of it if if you know that you know what you're going through. If you acknowledge it, it's like the same. You know, the, the first step to dealing with a problem is acknowledging that you have one. One of those things. That, that's kind of what we got to, and so on and so forth. But that was never to you know talk down on people who get therapy or why get therapy or who who should get therapy. I think a lot of it mental focus and a little bit mental fortitude. The the more you have it, the less reason you would need for therapy the less you have it you probably would need therapy you understand what i'm saying am i am i making sense there no no but you, listen. what <laughs> oh wow okay <laughs> nah you making sense I was, I was just joking i'm just saying it therapy is just popular everybody's talking about it now because it's, it's popular that don't mean that everybody necessarily needs it but then again who is to say who don't need it right right so that's all it it's just it's it's a journey that each individual got to take on their own. You know, some people just feel like they don't need therapy. Who am I to force that on them? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. now, it could be stubbornness. It could be the same person that you think actually needs it. It could be a person that's low key terrified of it. But if they don't, if they don't physically want to take themselves there, ain't nothing nobody can do. Right. So, so those people. If if somebody's willing to get help, or they would know that they could use some kind of help out of this matrix that they're in, those are the people that should seek therapy. Because sometimes the therapist could just help you get back on the bike and ride it yourself. Do you still seek therapy? No. And when, when that last session occurred, did it occur you knowing that it was going to be the last session because you felt like okay? I, I've been, whatever it was, I got the help, I got prepped, I, I had enough conversations. I, I now know that I need to think like this, approach like this, whatever. Did something like that hit you where you decided, all right, this is going to be my last session? No, it was insurance. <laughs> 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 no, it was nothing that deep. Oh, shit. So if, if the insurance was still kicking, you'd be, yeah, you, you still, I'd still, still been rocking. Okay, yeah. all right. Just, you know, but... I get but, that. But even that, though, like, like, 
And you got to go through a lot of therapists to find the one that you think. Right, who can vibe with you, you know where you the energy you feel. And then how often do you do that? Like, who got, who got time for that? Yeah. Going on therapy dates. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> screening, screening, screening therapists. You know what I'm yeah, like, you got that time. yeah, that's true. So a lot of people just take whoever they get. Mm-hmm. And they, they call that, all right, this is my, my, my person that you entrust in. And they may not necessarily be the fit for you. So it depends on how much work people are willing to do for it. I just my 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 one of, one of my brothers Damien he's not part of this group he knows he knows the crew but Damien's a, a, a veteran and uh, you know he's been through some shit and he's seen some shit you know in Iraq and he's had a couple of deployments and whatnot um, you know he never I don't think I don't know if he ever did but I know he never sees a therapist and I remember we had this same type of conversation and again I'm talking about he's seen some shit and been through some shit and. You know, when we when when our relationship got really, really good, you know, really close, our brotherhood, this is years ago, uh, you know, he was finally opening up. And the only reason he never opened up is just because I didn't I wasn't intruding. I wasn't being, you know, invasive. I wasn't trying to always ask him shit. Well, it started happening randomly on its own, organically, and then I was like, Yo, you don't mind if I ask you questions about, you know, the war and what you've seen and all that, you know, personal shit? Nah, nigga, fire off. Go right ahead. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. I still did it respectfully, but anyhow, at that point now, you know, I'm, I'm getting more intrigued and going deeper into certain things. And I remember when we talked about the therapist talk, you know, he broke it down deep and he was like, Wes, you know, how the fuck you think I feel when I'm the therapist I'm looking at who's supposed to talk to me, who's supposed to, you know, whatever, is, is 10, 15 years, 20 years younger than me. I know for sure they haven't haven't had a single bullet graze through their head, uh, or sorry, pass by their head. They haven't lost a single soldier. They, you know, he can go down the list of shit that he thinks about when he looks at this therapist. Like, you, you know, I get it. It's like in his mind, I'm not saying it verbatim for him, but in his mind, he's in the realms of like, bitch, what have you been through? You think just because you studied the books and the school and, and you got the doctorals or the masters or whatever that you're going to figure out how to tell me to, you know, shut this off and calm this down and try not this. Like, you don't, you don't think I know I got issue. You know, it was a real deep topic with him and I understood and I can only, I can only try to empathize with him as much as possible because I haven't been through what he's been through the same way he hasn't been through what I've been through. But I got what he was saying when it comes to like, people who who think they're 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 credible enough or they think that you know that there's a lot they can tell you but really have never experienced anywhere in the neighborhood so, of what they're going to tell you about so you saying that's tough to let somebody talk when so, they haven't been through nothing close to what they want to talk about right. you feel me but you saying then that the only person that could not the only but i would prefer it yes okay, so you, then you prefer a person that been through been through something been through something something that is closely related to ptsd where it changed your life you'll never forget this that happened to you and so that can't happen at at uh, 27 of course so it, no no of course it can but what i'm saying is when we had that talk I, I see the validity behind that he couldn't connect with these people because Got he just it. knew that they hadn't. The chances of what you're saying that, oh, if it did happen to somebody young and that, that youngster happens to be the therapist in front of them, yes, 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 it's possible. But right, right, right. chances are very, very slim. So it's hard for these veterans, and he's a young veteran. He's not old. He's fucking two years older than me. So it, it's, it's, it's not like that. But even then, you know, I, I get it, and I and I think I think it's like that when you talk to people in general. When you get deep in conversations, and somebody starts saying certain things, and you're just thinking, like, "What have you been through?" But hold on, especially they, if you've they got, been through. They got so. VA. They got VA therapists. What up with that? That's what I'm saying. He didn't go to it. He hated it. He was always dodging it. They right. were fucking. So then, it ain't, it ain't who the therapist is. It's him. His take on therapy. He don't think he needs it or wants it, or he feel like ain't nobody gonna be equipped. Yeah, that that part. I wouldn't say the first two. I'll say the third, the yeah, latter. Nobody will be. Nobody's equipped. gonna be equipped. Enough. Nobody's gonna be equipped. He, he, enough, he, he, to, he, enough to help him. Yeah, especially at the time. Now he's, you know, I don't want to say he's past all that. You know, we can all use a good conversation, this and that. But he's at his best. You know, shout out to my brother Damien. I love you. Um, he's at his best. He's got a great wife, and life is awesome. Just yeah. awesome. His kids, everything's awesome. So regardless of, I know he still has his dreams and his this and his that and the birthdays of the soldiers and all that stuff. Um. Nah, he doesn't see any need for a therapist now at this point in life, no. But at the time, that's how he felt in regards to they can't connect with me. 
I can't connect with them. I just, it doesn't, it just can't happen. It just can't happen because I know you haven't been through shit and there's nothing inside of me that'll allow me to accept that. Yes, you, you studied the stuff. You saw your case studies. You you did your clinicals. I, we all get that. We get that. No one's trying to uh, uh, devalue what you've gone through and, and the doctoral knowledge that you have. But you still, <laughs> you still didn't go through anything. So, and that holds a lot of value. That holds a lot of water when you actually go through something. Wes, that's all. That's Wes, all. You trying to say then? You, your argument really is that you don't th you don't think therapy at all is not true, bro. But well, but I am on the yes. Well, listen, because if what you're saying is true, then all it, all it takes is for for you, Damien, anybody else, me to find that therapist that went through similar shit, so that I could deem them worthy enough to tell me back. Right? Who gonna do that? Where are you gonna go to find that? Who? You, how you gonna find somebody that went through? Almost is the same thing you went through. Like, that's not all it takes to understand somebody else. You're correct. You're correct. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You're right on that, right? And without having to divulge into the details, you and I, prior to the podcast, had many deep conversations. And we went in many deep levels that neither one of us knew about anything. Right. And with that said, I just tend to think, wow. I already, even though I already connected with you on the first podcast, and because of the vibes and the shit talking and having fun and you know com comedians and all that bullshit, it was even di more different this time because it's like wow, we, we we there's a lot of things that we share in common. There's a lot of things that we can that we can uh, talk about because we've been there, done that, went around the block with it, and that immediately I think connected us. Where it's like okay, well, whether I you gave me some feedback or some suggestions or I did the same. It's gonna be way more well received because you're like, oh, okay, well, you've been in those shoes, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, it's just different. Now, that doesn't mean that you're still gonna give me the best advice or that I should, you know, run with what you tell me. I understand that, and that's where I'm gonna say, it, you know, as as boldly as I can. That's where doctors are different. They've taught themselves to be unbiased. They've taught themselves to, hey, even though I haven't been through it, or I might feel bad for this person, whatever. They're trying to go through the steps that they, they've deemed accurate to try to help somebody get over something and so on and so forth. I understand that. I'm not talking down on therapy or psychology. I hate when psychiatrists are throwing medicine at you so fucking quick, but I don't even want to get into that. I just think that if we taught, if we taught ourselves to be mentally tougher, let's just say that generally, if we taught ourselves, if, if society, this has nothing to do with gender or, or, or any bullshit going on out there that's so popular on social media. I'm just meaning in general. If we taught ourselves to be mentally tougher, I just think uh, we'd be in a better place. There'll be less. But that sounds uh, so vague. Uh, what that mean? Meaning like to believe to believe in the, in your thoughts in regards to like addressing yourself before you, you rely on somebody else to do it for you. There's many different ways to. There's steps to it, but okay, we don't teach ourselves to do that. We teach ourselves to rely on somebody else. But Think how, about that, Gene. No, we do. No. Listen, listen. I'm not saying that we don't, but how does a person know that they don't need somebody else? Well, we, I'm not, and I'm not even saying they don't need anybody. What I'm just saying is, we need. To, it's kind of like when you're raising kids. You don't want to. Okay, if, when a kid falls and gets hurt, and they, eh, typically most parents, especially the mother. Immediately runs right to him. Right, oh, right, boom. Right, right, right. And we all think, you know, that that's not the, you don't want to teach a kid that. You just taught that kid because then it's a developmental phase where right, right. Hey, I made this noise after I felt this pain right, right. and I got the comfort I was looking for. Out, right. And that's going to follow forever if you don't nip it in the butt. So don't wait till four, five, six years, 10 years, a, thir a teenager. Right. You fucked up. You got to do it. So if we would focus more as a society, parentally, whatever you want to call it, into teaching mental fortitude, teaching mental toughness of how to, the, uh, uh, you know, the whatever is, I think we'd be in a better place where there'll be less people relying on therapy. Yo, that, listen, that's all. That's nah, all. That's, that's a, all. Listen, that's a dope and very valid point and idea, 100%, right? But look at some of the parents that are left with that responsibility. They don't even got it in themselves to to yes I know to put that yeah. on to You're right. a kid I get it you know yep. what I'm saying yep. so now the kid is lost because now the kid is only following whatever guardian he got in front of him so in other words 
the 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 system the program was broke a few links ago a, a, right a, a, several a, a links, links ago of, yeah. yes right but is it fixable i'm just saying talking about it and and trying to encourage people to do it i just think it helps a little bit more at a time you know a little bit more at a time you know i'm 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 i don't have kids so i told this i went to, i went to a a a kid party i thought it was an adult party my my one of my clients he canceled on me at the last minute. He told me why. He was helping a, 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 his best friend do a cajachina, do, do a, a pork fry, a, 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 you know, a Cuban thing to do, right? So he said he couldn't get out of there in time to come train. He apologized. He goes, man, let me make it up to you. Come over here. Come have some drinks. Get some good food, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? Cool. Let me go bust a workout. I'll go over there. So I did that. I get over there. It's a kid party. I'm like, ah, fuck, whatever. It is what it is. We're going to do adult shit. So I'm sitting with a bunch of parents, single Kidless. <laughs> I'm sitting with a bunch of parents. All these parents were loving the moment that they had away from their kids. Drinking on some beer with some good food, and none of these kids are bothering them. And I'm sitting there with them, and of course, here come the piercing questions. You don't have any kids? Well, if you don't mind me asking, why not? It no, nah, you, you, so, you don't mind me asking what well, you doing here. Yeah, well, <laughs> so I've, I've already practiced. I've been in this situation so many times. I'm 46. So I always go in and out of this parental, you know, disputes. And I learned this. And I told them, I said, hey, listen, guys, I know better than to try to tell a parent anything about parenting, especially when I'm not a parent. I'm not trying to go there with none of y'all. I don't want to talk shit about kids. So why have I not? Why have I been quiet? Why this and that? Because y'all talking parental shit. And who am I to tell any one of y'all what to do or why this or why that? Because I don't have a kid. They laughed it off and they're like, "No, nah, I get that." And they, they they plugged in that they have a friend and this and that. And they're like, "Why? Why? What do you think we can do differently?" I'm like, "Nah, I see you setting it up. You setting it up. It isn't no." And then my homeboy, his wife, and they know that we're both very blunt. She goes, "I'm not gonna lie to you, Wes." I kind of lose it sometimes with my kids, you know? When the minute they act up too much, this and that, I fucking flip on them. And I'm like, motherfuckers, da 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 And then my husband gets mad at me, and he puts me in my place like, yo, you need to chill. Like, you too. But he doesn't understand. Like, I've been working all day, and I come home, and these kids, this and that. He doesn't go through that. I go through that, and I'm just looking at her like, damn, how do I answer this? You know what I mean? Because it's either you can do things differently or you can't, but the situation is what it is. I know when to say the right things, man. I, I don't want to, you know. So what over- you said? I stayed quiet. Oh. I stayed quiet and I'm like, listen, all I can tell you is, you know, you're the mom. When these kids come up to you the way they do in, in ñoño, what I call ñoño form, ñoño is like a goo goo gaga form. Like, like, mom, mm-hmm. can you, you know, even though they talk with a deep voice, Gene, dad, can you, you know, when you're, whoa, whoa, don't go soft on me. If you want to ask me something, just ask me something with, with the right voice. You ain't got to go all soft on me. I don't like that. I don't like that with a girl. I don't like that with nobody. The kids were doing that while we were talking, and it happened right in the middle of this conversation, and the kids walked away. And I was like, well, that there's an example. And they all started laughing. I'm like, why did you do this, this, and that? When he came up and he was like, goo, 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 goo. she's like, yeah, you're right. I got to work on that. Well, I mean, parents lie. Let's just say that, because parents will front like, like they, they mad at their kids. But they'll do anything for their kids. Like I seen, I see some badass kids with parents who be wanting to, you know, chastise, but like they can't because like, you know, I understand. I'm a parent. I understand. What's up, you crazy people out there? Let me interrupt this podcast really quick just to give you a reminder. If you really like the gear that I'm rocking and you're a proud black sheep yourself, make sure you go check out blacksheepapparel.shop where you can get all the dopest gear to help remind the world that you truly are a proud black sheep. We got caps, T-shirts, tank tops, shorts, sweaters, hoodies. I mean, you name it, we got it on there. Make sure you go show some love, show your support, and represent what you really are. Go to blacksheepapparel.shop. Now back to the podcast. You know, I truly love the the, the concept of Hey Doc because, I, I you know, that's something that I do. And I know, obviously, I'm being biased. I, I try to be my own doctor. I think we all do to an extent, but like you were saying earlier, I'm my toughest critic, you know what I'm saying? So I come at myself hard. So that's when I talk to myself, I'm, I am role playing. I am like, you know, what would a doctor tell me? What, what, would, what would an entrepreneur tell me if I'm going to, you know, ask the advice of somebody? But yeah, I but can't. But you, you also coming from that, like that David Goggins approach. 
That's true. You know I mean? Some yes. people, some people only uh, listen to that. You know, or some people they like the the goo goo gaga soft talk shit. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. That's so, true. I guess it depends on who you find that's enough that that will motivate your type. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so that the, but the Haydock thing, like, it, it's a play on not necessarily people needing a therapist because not. Like, like I said, not every every therapist is gonna work for you. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't out there like promoting like, cause I like I don't do it enough for mm. me to be promoting it like that. But I know it's not a bad thing for me. The few times that I did do it, what I'm saying is that whole Hey Doc series that I'm doing online is more about uh, the play is like you could be look at it as somebody talking to a therapist, somebody talking to himself, cause that's what I'm technically doing. Right. Right. Somebody talking to whoever they think is out there that's listening. Whatever, ho- however you conceptualize um, therapy, whether it be private with the therapist, with God, with whomever, whatever that works for you, that's what you need to use and mm-hmm. focus on. Mm-hmm. So it don't got to be somebody with insurance that you pay for to go right, sit on the right. couch for forty five minutes. You know what I mean? It could be your homie. So that's where I wanted to go to earlier when we were talking about it. Do you believe it could? Yeah. You're, you already covered that. You do. Yeah, so like, so it could be a good friend. It might even be a coworker who's 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 sounded, you know, who's, who's just there mind, you know, he's mindly sounded and and can hear you out without trying to be biased and give you some great advice. I think anybody so this whole thing is everybody's on this journey. Everybody's riding their bike, right? Everybody's on their own path. You riding your own bike. So you need somebody, anybody if it's not yourself that can whisper in your ear, like, yo, you're getting off track. And then just like, try to bring you back. Figur- figuratively move you bike back mm-hmm. on the on the track so your bike is going straight. Sometimes we can't see. We'll turn and we're turning. Right. We turn the whole bike because we just look this way. And somebody close to us will be like, yo, you know what I mean? So not too many times we find people in our personal lives that could do that. So then we go out and seek it in a therapist or in a pastor or whatever it is that we use but something or somebody got to help get us back on track if we ain't able to do it on our own do you think that 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 same topic that we're discussing is affecting the dating game nowadays because the dating game it it really is it's not about a hot topic it really is what it is the stats are out the numbers are out the studies are out the research is out and people are dating less People are conceiving less. People are getting married less. Uh, divorces are, uh, I think, just over 50%. They're like 56, somewhere oh, around there. But that's the easy answer. Okay. Bitches are crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fuck, here we go. <laughs> Fuck, here we go. Listen, we all... What are, you, are, you, are you putting this blame on the women? Come on now. Nah, Come on now. You're clowning. You're clowning. I was just... Being funny, but 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 do you do we, you th- do you think they're putting a little bit too much pressure on us? Like like for real, for real. Do you think women are putting too much pressure? Do you think women are? They're definitely not. We all have our. We all take certain blame, and I'm gonna put myself in there just because I'm a goddamn man. Okay, but if we're gonna try to divide the blame as to why we're at where we're at, without going into details, because this is all fresh, and like I was just mentioning, the studies and the research has been done. Do you personally think that females are the bigger reason as to why? The dating game is fucked up right now. Not at all. No? Not at all. So what do you you think is going on? I think personal accountability is what is fucking up the game. So it don't matter what gender that is. No one wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to be accountable. So it's not, I, I can't put it on women. I can't put it on dudes. There's nobody that needs to fix their shit so that they can be better for the other gender. Nah, it ain't none of that. It's personal accountability that a lot of people are not taking. You yeah, but, G- okay, Gene, I agree with that, but that, that sounds a little bit more like, I don't know. <sighs> Say it. What it sound like? That's too broad for me right, because, okay, okay, cause be, right, be, cool. being accountable is being accountable, but but why aren't, why aren't, why aren't more dates happening? Why aren't people dating more? The, 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 we got to keep going. We got to get as far as we can into the root of it. So why aren't people having more attempts? In order to have an attempt to vibe with somebody and see whether or not there's somebody that you want to invest more time in or can connect with in, in, the, in the chemistry way and in, in the energy ways we were talking about earlier, you have to have some type of personal encounter, which basically we're, we're describing as a date. Why aren't people attempting more dates 
nowadays, whether young generation, you know, mid twenties or thirties, why aren't people dating more? Why do you think that is? Don't give me that accountability shit. Give me something better than that. Nah, well, that's what I was giving because that's part of it. Like, no, and that accountability was to answer the question as to which gender or or females might be affecting it right, more. Right. That's what that answer was about. Okay. But why are we not dating more? I don't know. I think a lot of people are just traumatized from some of the dates they've been on, some of the relationships they've been in. Some people ain't been able to rebound from them shits. PTSD you know I mean? from, from dating or having horrible dates. And so back to what you were saying about people being softer nowadays, that's where it's carrying in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because now people ain't even, and I'm not even calling, I don't even want to just call it soft. I'm just calling, I'm saying a lot of people, men and women, ain't emotionally strong enough to pull themselves out of the out of the, the, the quicksand that That's is slowly in yeah. relationships. Mm, so a lot okay. of people, and because we got access to so many things just sitting in your crib on your phone, who needs to go outside? Right, so that is what I want to piggyback. To me, and I'm no expert, obviously, and, and, and you know, if, if you sit back and you pay attention to it, I think this, this speaks enough volume all on its own. To me, the biggest thing that's affected the dating game is, is simply that there's a false sense of many options out there. And the false sense comes from social media. So all these likes, all these DMs that, that happen behind closed doors for women and men, of course women get 10 times more than what men do. This gives people a false sense of, man, I got options for days. I got options for days because when I post, I got at least 100 likes, 500 likes. I get this. So now they're, they're saying, I don't got to put up with anybody's shit when I know I have another option. But here's the thing. I, I, Those I, are virtual options. No, because you're right. Up, up until they become real. So, right, but, but okay. So, so if enough if enough DMs come from, um, right now I'm gonna point a finger at, at the females. If an, if a female's getting mad DMs, right? She's a seven. She's a seven. But you know, you know, there's simps and just bust ass, you know, ducks out there who are making her feel like a fucking eleven mm -hmm. all the time, offering her money, sending her money without ever fucking anything. Not, this bitch is on cloud nine. Get it? I would be too if I had a bunch of you know heifers doing that for me. But now she has a false sense of it. But she still wants love. She still wants to date. That's something that happens in her private life. So she goes on a date. Uh, he's not perfect. He's this. He's missing that. Whatever the fuck it is. Right away, somewhere in the back of her mind, she's gonna be like, Psst, "I just got a thousand dollars sent to me a week ago. I just, I just, I have a hundred DMs right now, and out of that hundred, ten of them are good-looking dudes who are models and they have." boats and yachts and you know what i mean there she there's so many options there this date if it didn't go perfect fuck that i got another option over here that is what to me is what's hurting society when it comes to socializing and dating who the fuck is sitting that long with a chick like that well then she won't give him the opportunity to go past one date Oh, that's the I, thing. I, I don't need more than one date if that's to realize that yeah exactly but here, but here's but here's the sad part now that dude, because more than likely he paid, there went two, three, four hundred dollars because he was just swinging for the fences. Thought he had a little vibe going on. Mm -hmm. Thought, you know, she's mad cool. I don't care that she, you know, she's pretty and she's got 20,000 followers. I think that we're vibing. I think that, you know, she really digs me. Bullshit. There's so many more options out there. You feel me? I think that's hurting the game. That's just an opinion, but the stats are that the game is definitely hurting. People are not dating as often. Kids are, are are being born at a slower rate. We're actually, even though we think we're all- That ain't over, a bad thing. I know, right? You think we're overpopulated, right? That ain't a bad thing. Elon Musk said that according to the rate of death and birth and all that bullshit, we're actually on the lower end. We're actually going on the, the bad end. We're not going over. We're going under. Put that on Elon Musk. <laughs> I, I, that's not a bad thing, man. We got a lot of people that shouldn't be having kids. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I man, do that for some man ass kids out there. Yeah, <laughs> yo, I, like I, I got a a ring camera on my door, right? Oh Lord, you see it all. I just, be oh. happy, I just happen to get an alert. These kids out of school just for nothing just came to my door and just 
banged it one time and it ran, but I, I saw it clearly. So I see the kids running. So I pull up on the block just just to be the old man grumpy dude. I just sat outside in front of my door and now the kids are shook. Now the boy don't want to come back down the block. Mm. I kind of wanted to laugh about it just to be like, aha, I saw you. Right. Well, these kids, they, you know, ain't got no home training. They're out there just doing shit for yeah, shit yeah. and giggles. Well, you never did any kind of wild shit like that when you were young? I, I Especially was, coming from New York? I did. I did stupid shit, I guess. I did horrible shit. Nah, I didn't get I didn't get to horrible. I did I ain't start doing dumb shit till I got older. Yeah, well, um it does it doesn't I guess because I know I did a lot of dumb shit, you know, even when I see the examples that you're talking about, and again, going referring back to my homeboy Chris, the same thing. He'll post it on our chat when his stepdaughter was dating a new boyfriend and they're in their fourteens, fifteens, and there's like little hood beef or whatever the fuck. And then out of nowhere, here comes like three or four little delinquents. They kicked his door. They threw shit, and it's all on camera. And then he'll post it. He'll tell us, like, look at these little punk ass. You know, it's wild, but at least you got the ring door camera, you know, nowadays, you know, to help you try to, like. I love that shit. If you catch them, you know the face. You, you put them on blast early. If not, they didn't keep getting away with it. The, the, when we were younger, you can get away with it because there wasn't no cameras. Right. There it, it wasn't cameras like that back then. So you can kick a door down or do some stupid shit. And all it was was a dumbass challenge. <laughs> it was a fucking dare. Imagine the dumbass shit that we did over a dare. Come on. You know how many dudes is in jail right now because of dares? And then you had double dare, like if it was just you know that like, much more. <laughs> the amount of crimes that people have committed because off a of dare. Right. It's, it's wild, man. You know, th there's a lot of good behind the social media wild shit that, that has, you know, technology, the way it's advanced and what it's done for us in regards to communication and networking and, and entrepreneurship and business opportunities. And, you know, there's a lot of great stuff, you know, reaching out to the masses from, from the, your phone and your, your nobody going viral and what it can do for you. All that are, are just immense pros. But the cons, the cons of this falsehood, this, this, you know, people believing that they're celebrities, they're untouchable, that they can pull these pranks on people like because, you know, it's just a prank that they, you know, just all that wild shit that they do, you know, what you call do for the gram, what you, you know, do it for the vibe. I don't that's, just, that's just wild. I don't trip about that because ain't nothing going to change it. Right? Correct. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. Yeah. Like, I don't give it no oxygen because... That shit will stress you out. You watch it. Too much energy. Yeah. Shit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Like, I like the fact that some of these videos be coming up blurred at first scene. But yeah, I'd say. Content, <laughs> like, yo, be easy <laughs> yeah. before you watch this. I skip right past that. I don't need yeah. that shit in my life. It, 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 whatever it is, whether it's some gory shit or yeah. some violent cop this or whatever, it, it's, it's negativity. That's why That's why they're blurring it. So, of course, right, if you have that negative image in your head, right, it's going to affect you. Yeah. I don't need it. I don't need it forced upon me. Like, we got to live it on a daily. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't need it. So I like that they put that on because I just skip right past it. And I'm not saying that I need, like, I I watch what I want to watch. I watch my UFC when I want it. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I need my 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 hint of fighting or, or, or getting out, you know, aggression, whatever, I watch the shit that I want to watch. Sports is good for that or whatever. But, you know, that's my preference, watching that shit over watching dudes jumping an old man so should I can I can I assume that you don't watch uh news too tough? Like I, on a I do when it's on. Like if somebody put it on, I watch it and I sit there faithfully and watch it. But I don't turn it on. I just don't turn the TV on. You don't look for it. But if I, it's there, you'll let it grab. Yeah, yeah, you. yeah. Yeah. I don't I'm I don't chip off it. It don't matter the channel either. Like if somebody's watching, I'll take somebody's perspective perspective, but I don't turn the TV on. Because TV just don't do it for me no more. Like it's changed, man. That that game has changed. You know everything about. I just got other shit to do as well. Speaking of other shit to do, bro, let's talk about that real quick. You're performing tonight. Yep. Uh, Pinecrest, tell us, tell the us, comedy tell in. the comedy in comedy in one of the dopest rooms in Florida, South Florida for sure. The comedy in invite only. Nice. It's a pretty dope setup, yeah. Pinecrest is, is, is doing it like that, yeah, huh? Like Invite that. only. Mm -hmm. Can't so just gotta, pop you, up. So you got to get on the list? Yeah, because you won't even know what comics is going to be on. It's kind of dope. But uh, they've been doing it for like seven years. That's what's up. I love I love that you, you, you're staying active with that. But, hey, Doc is where it's at. And you told me something about Ew. this. I got this for you, son. Look at this beauty right here. This is one of my first... Um, 
you know, items of merch. Okay. But it's merch. New series. Damn, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Put that in the camera. Hey, Doc, at Gene Hardy. Yep. Y'all take a look at that. So people can buy this. People can order this. People can go to the site. So that's what I'm getting on now. Just uh, got some of the prototypes. And so I sell it live. But right now we're working on the online stuff. So that's coming. So, okay. So live right now and then the online stuff is coming. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. And then the Hey Doc series... I mean, we were talking about it earlier. You haven't started a YouTube series of it yet. It's been I, I more. did start it. I just ain't been pushing that. That's what I'm, I'm working on now. So, yeah, we, we got to get rock on yeah. that for, for, for sure, okay. for sure. Cause yeah, yeah. That, that's, but don't that's, forget, I'm an old man. Like, this grown man shit trying to get, you know. Acclimated. Acclimated <laughs> yeah. to, to the, the social media shit. But I take on all suggestions. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're open to that. You, you you definitely you've been somebody who's always communicated with the fans and, and one who vibes them. Matter of fact, the first time that I stumbled upon you was uh, shout out to to Caballo to Mark Marcos. Um, you were the host for his uh, perform. Uh, what do you call right. it for uh, the show? Yeah, for the show that day. A lot so of this, I think. You, you you were the one who was always introducing who was going to perform, and. You know, I didn't. I, I I considered that a host. I remember I told Kawaii, I told my friends. You know, after the whole show was over, I was like, "Yo, whoever that fucking black dude was, the host, like he 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 stole the show. Like he was fucking killing it." And I remember I eventually I told Kawaii that when we were playing poker, I was like, "Hey, be careful putting that guy as the host because he almost stole it from you." He's like, "Oh yeah, Gene, yeah, Gene, Gene, he's really good." I was like, "No, nah, he was awesome. He was crowd working. <laughs> he was this. He was that. It was dope." And you know, and, and that's when we eventually had our, our first podcast. But um, not much has changed about you, brother. You, you still you still that dude. You know, you, I love that you still doing the comedy. You staying live with it. I love the whole the whole hey doc thing. I'm I'm honored and privileged to get that. I appreciate it. you guys show your support. Make sure you uh, follow Gene Harding at Gene Harding <laughs> yep. at Gene Harding right there on the dot uh, no, right there. And you can also follow the series, The Hate Doc. It's hilarious. The guy's going viral more and more with these videos. You definitely want to tune in on that. And you perform tonight at Pinecrest. Pine at Crest. What's hey. it called again? At the Comedy Inn. The Comedy Inn. Shout out mm -hmm. to the Comedy Inn here in Pinecrest. First time coming down there th this far south for Me? yeah nah. to perform? Nah. 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 I'm a vet down here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I've been down here. Back when the Miami Improv... You know, they had that Coconut Grove one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right, yeah, over there in the little, uh -huh. go down there, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was right before you go down into Oxygen and all that. Yeah. Now, all the old heads are going to remember that part yeah. right there. Gene, I can't wait to have you back again, brother. Listen, man, I love having people like you on. Love to talk about life. Love to clown. Love to do all that shit, catch up all the time. So anybody watching, paying attention, you're going to see Gene back again. It's always a privilege and it's always fun, man. I appreciate you, my brother. Have it. Great night tonight. Kill it like I know you're going to kill it. it. I'll be right there watching, obviously. And for all of you guys, make sure you tune in. Follow Gene Harding at Gene Hardin, G E N E Harding, H A R D I N G. Yep. Instagram, everything else you can follow right there through his account. Gene, I love you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. Peace, man. You, man. Guys, have a great one. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.